This is actually one of those first big challenges to learn as meteor spinners. Turned out that it required a concept I already had access to. What if instead I split them along a line that divided me from front to back? <laughs> meteor flowers. We were off to the races, friends. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm gonna lay down some meteor theory for you. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. I will confess that I totally avoided diving into meteor spinning for quite some time. As typically happens, a lot of the early stuff just didn't grab me and it wasn't until I saw people integrating it into 3Poi that I was finally like, huh, yeah, okay. Let's do it. That also meant that I learned meteor spinning in kind of a piecemeal fashion. And especially when it came to weaves, I discovered years later that there was a major gap in my knowledge of them, as well as the waist wraps that come with them. But then there was this absolutely amazing video from Chris Rovo several years ago that opened my eyes up and helped me realize that meteor weaves were way more complex than I realized. And I want to share with you what I learned from that video and what I've learned on this topic since. And just as a quick refresher, since it's going to be really important in this video, when it comes to meteor spinning, we have two ends of the prop and we usually refer to them by the finger that's furthest to that end of the hand. So on one side, we have our thumb end and on the other side, we have our pinky end. Regardless of the specific grip we're using, we have a thumb end and we have a pinky end. So let's first tackle some basics. Unlike when we're spinning poi with both our hands, we perceive weaves of even beats to be symmetrical when we're spinning meteor. That means that what's considered the basic weave is a two-beat weave going forward. Now, this two-beat weave also has another specific property to it. The same end is always leading from side to side. What's considered the default when we spin a forward two-beat is to do so with the thumb end leading. There are other arrangements for this, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So we have a two-beat thumb lead weave. Is there such a thing as a two-beat pinky lead weave? Yes, indeed. And kind of the default option for this is to perform it as a reverse rather than a forward weave. This is actually one of those first big challenges to learn as meteor spinners because it's usually the first time we encounter anything at all that's pinky lead. As poi spinners, our default is to make everything thumb lead. So the thumb lead two beat isn't that big a leap, but the pinky lead definitely takes some getting used to. Now here's the thing. We also have an option for a reverse thumb lead. And in a lot of cases, this gets performed as a four beat. This involves twisting the hand around in such a way that you add an additional degree of twist to each side of the weave, getting the thumb end around in such a way that it can lead from side to side. For many people, this extra twisting is actually more comfortable than the reverse pinky lead, specifically because it puts the thumb end back in the driver's seat. So if there's a four beat thumb lead, is there also a four beat pinky lead? Yes, and the easiest way to do it is from a forwards weave. Just like the reverse thumb lead, you can add an extra degree of twist to each side of a forward thumb lead two beat and switch things around such that your pinky end is now leading on each side. And I will say, I personally found this the hardest of these basic meteor weaves to learn. Not only is it putting the end that is most unintuitive for most poi spinners in the driver's seat, it also involves twisting the wrist in a way that is kind of uncomfortable. Not impossible, mind you, but it does take a lot of getting used to. Okay, so now we have a forward thumb lead two beat, a forward pinky lead four beat, a reverse pinky lead two beat, and a reverse thumb lead four beat. What can we do with this information? Well, for starters, we can put together something that you might notice has been a rather glaring omission thus far in all our meteor weave breakdowns. We can perform a three beat meteor weave, either forward or reverse. On the forward side, I usually do this by performing the thumb lead version of the weave on the left side and the pinky lead version on the right side. This requires an extra degree of twist on the right side, but it does get the job done. On the reverse side, I typically do that extra degree of twist on the left. This turns the left side into a thumb lead side and the right side into the pinky lead side. Now, in both cases, I want you to notice that I'm performing the two beat version of the weave on one side and the four beat version of the weave on the other. They average out to being a total 
of three beats, and just purely because Meteor is weird like that, they also wind up looking and feeling quite asymmetrical as a result. Okay, now what about going back and forth between forward and reverse? What about waist straps? If you've learned a Meteor waist strap, it's almost certainly this one, going back and forth between a forward thumb led two beat and a reverse thumb led four beat. This is a really popular option because it keeps the thumb leading the entire way around. It also feels relatively close to a traditional two-handed poi waist strap because there's a total of six beats to it. This waist strap just gets to that in a totally different way. But this was actually not the first Meteor waist strap that I learned. I was really obsessed with symmetry and so my first instinct was to put the thumb lead and the pinky lead two beats together. My initial attempts at this were pretty crude though. As it turns out, there was a missing piece of the puzzle that I did not have, and someone taught me the fully thumb led waist strap before I could find it. The answer came in that Chris Rovo video, and it turned out that it required a concept I already had access to. I had just never thought to use it in this context. That's right, it's time for our old friend, the linear isolation. The key to switching from thumb lead to pinky lead with two beat weaves involved performing a linear isolation with the lead poi as you turn from one side to the other. When you're turning from the thumb side, you essentially have to stall the poi up to allow the pinky end to sneak underneath it. And when you're turning from the pinky side, you essentially have to stall the poi down to allow the thumb end to pass over top of it. Of course, when you do it at speed, neither one looks like a stall at all, but thinking of them in this way does help in getting another trick. Usually when I teach people linear isolations, it's as a tool to help them learn anti-spin flowers. If you have your hand follow the poi up and down as it goes through your body center from side to side, it's a way to make four petal anti-spin flowers that feel more intuitive and natural. So wait, with this meteor weave, we also have linear isolations that are going up and down just like that exercise that teaches us anti-spin flowers. Does that mean that we can do the same thing here? <laughs> Meteor flowers. <laughs> we were off to the races, friends. If you treat that thumb lead stall like it's a flower petal at the top of the flower and the pinky lead stall like it's a petal at the bottom of the flower, all of a sudden that waist strap turns into a completely different beast. One way you can think of this is that you're converting the waist strap into a fountain. Each end of the meteor is performing a total of four downbeats, so that gives us five anti-spin petals. Because there are two ends to this pattern, we wind up with a total of 10 petals, a 10 petal meteor flower. Also, just to stick a pin in it, because gunslingers are essentially just very short meteors, this trick also works with them. And I will totally confess that I learned gunslingers originally for no other reason than to turn them into flowers with this method. I've actually done a video outlining this process for gunslingers too that I'll go ahead and link to down in the description. Cool, so we can make three beat meteor weaves, thumb lead waist straps, and meteor flowers with what we've learned so far. Is there more down this rabbit hole? Oh, you know there is. We've seen a meteor waist strap that goes from a two beat to a four beat, and a waist strap that goes from a two beat to a two beat there's also going to be one that goes from four beat to four beat as well. This one involves so much wrist twisting, but it's useful to create a waist strap that can be tripped out just a little bit and slowed down. Again, that pinky led forward weave is a bit of a challenge, but going back and forth between the two four beats feels nice and leisurely in a way that the two beat to the two beat really doesn't. This is a personal favorite of mine for doing pirouettes with. And if we're going to learn all of the things, of course, there's also the two beat to four beat, but pinky led. This version puts all the most difficult weaves together in one package, so I almost never use it. But knowing it's out there and drilling it nonetheless does check off that box, and hey, maybe you'll find a use for it that I haven't yet. So, we've seen two beat to four beat waist straps with both the thumb lead and the pinky lead variants. We've seen waist straps based completely in two beat weaves and in four beat weaves. That's it, right? Not so fast. Remember before we dove into the waist strap question, how I showed you that we can split these weaves from side to side, such that we're doing a two beat on one side and a four beat on the other in order to get a three beat weave? Hey, we can do that with waist straps too. Think of it this way. When doing a two beat to a four beat waist strap, we're essentially splitting the weaves by the side of our body down the center. My left side is doing the four beat and my right side is doing the two beat. But there's another way that we can split this. What if instead I split them along a line that divided me from front to back? Now those four beats are on my back side and those two beats are on my front side. 
I could also do it the other way around with the four beats on my front and the two beats on my back instead if I preferred. Why might I have a preference for putting the two beats on my front side instead of on my back side? Well, again, it all comes down to those linear isolations. Remember how I used those to turn my waist strap with two beats into a flower? I can do the same thing with this waist strap too. This will result in a flower with six down beats on each side, resulting in seven petals per end for a total of 14 petals. That definitely looks like gobbledygook from a full media perspective, but it's actually really helpful in the gunslinger realm. You see, the 10 petal flower in gunslingers is more or less analogous to a triketra in traditional poi spinning. The 14 petal flower is analogous to a four petal anti-spin in traditional poi spinning too. How on earth did I get there? Well, I did a whole video explaining the mathematics of this idea that I'll go ahead and link to in the description if you want to check it out. But overall, I'm hoping that the takeaway you get from all of this is that meteor weaves function in such a way that you can cut and paste bits and pieces of them to produce as many beats as you want in different spots. Different combinations have different uses, and it's helpful to know them all. Now, I didn't get at all into things like doing forward two beats with pinky leading, or if you can do more than four beats on either side, but these things do exist out there. And if you want to, they are great challenges to explore. I just wanted to give you all the basis by which you could arrive in those places and explore them for yourselves. Because as it turns out, there's way more going on with meteor weaves than meets the eye. Learning these things opened up a lot of doors for me, and I hope that they do the same for you too. Want to learn more meteor tricks? I know it's a challenge, and that's why I created a structured course on how to spin meteor over at my learning site at learn.drexfactor.com. Even better, you can use the code BETA at checkout to get 50% off on this course for a limited time. This course covers all the basics and it shows you how to put all of it together into a killer combo. Go and check it out. If you got anything out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like, a comment, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. This helps other people find and learn from my videos, and it helps my channel grow. And I also just want to put out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these wonderful folks right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. If you'd like to help me out in my mission to bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people learn to be creative with their bodies and their brains, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content, a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus some great behind the scenes and extras content as well. So go check that out. Please and thank you. What's your favorite use for meteor weaves? Let me know down in the comments. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you will see a link to a list of other videos like this one that you may enjoy, and I'll include a link to that same playlist down in the description if you're watching on Instagram. Make sure you get out and flow today, and I will see you with a new video on Friday. Peace.